Welcome everyone, welcome back to another TechNerd tutorial. Today we're going to be installing a dynamic DNS client onto an Ubuntu machine so that we can access the applications on here from any computer with internet access. So if you're following along, this is part of a multi-part series about in creating a home server. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to create our dynamic DNS account install the client and port forward so that it's now accessible on the internet. So first things first, we want to sign up for a dynamic DNS client. I've installed Chromium web browser. You can easily do this from the Ubuntu Software Center. It's very similar to Chrome, but it's open source. You can technically install Google Chrome itself, but it is a couple steps more so I've just simply installed this Chromium browser and just type in Chromium browser in the search field and there I'll be. I just like to use it instead of Firefox but Firefox works just fine. So we go into the web browser. There are many different dynamic DNS update clients. The one that I find to be uh, very simple to use and not very intrusive is called no IP. So no IP you can go ahead and just search that in the search field. And the very first one, no IP free dynamic DNS. This is the one that I want to use. So I go ahead, click on it, and it even says that this is uh, freedom to connect your devices from anywhere. So once you have this set up, this particular computer can access from anywhere with internet access. We wanna go ahead and sign up. And it's gonna ask us for some information. So I'm going to go ahead, create username and fill out all this information. When I get to the last field, it's going to ask me what kind of web address do I want. Now, what we're using is a dynamic DNS that's free. So we don't own the domain, the ddns.net. That is free for us to use. And if you want something that's very specific to your own uh, business or your own home, then you would have to first purchase a domain before you can have that domain. So for us, it's technerdservices.com. That is a purchase domain. We're here, we're using a free alternative. So we go ahead and put what is uh, the unique identifier in our web address and the drop down menu, you can choose some additional ones. There is only one for free, which is fine. Any of the enhanced one you do have to pay for. So if I scroll down, we will see what is the enhanced. So here there's much more domain choices and it is $20 a year. But what we want, we just want to keep the simple one where it's one domain choice. So the ddns.net, quite simple, but even for business, that's very professional to have something simple like that. And then our different host names. So we can have three different web addresses with this particular account, free sign. It's gonna go ahead, send us a confirmation email. I'm gonna go ahead, log in on my email and then get that all sorted out and then we'll be right back. So here I am in my mail. You can see that we have the no IP registration. You can just go ahead and click on it. Say that it has been created. I just need to activate it. So click on the link. Now we're completely activated. So this is wonderful, this is great. So now that we're activated, we have that particular account created. So if I go back to the no IP webpage, I can go ahead and sign in. So now that we are here, we can see that I have one free host name out of three and that this is basically basic and free, so that's completely fine. I can go ahead and take a look at that do domain by look, clicking on Manage Hosts. And there I can see technerdservices.dns.net and then the current IP, which is currently blurred out. I can always modify and remove it as necessary. So now that we have this set up, we want to be able to install the update client because our IP will change whenever our modem reboots, because it's a home server and a home internet provider, and we don't have a business account that would have a static IP, because that's just too, too expensive. We don't need to worry about that unless we really need it. 
So now that we have this account, the next thing we want to do is we want to install the update client. So NoIP does have its own update client. It's very simple for us to do. We just need to find the web page and then follow the instructions to get it all set up. So what I'm just going to Google now is no IP update client Ubuntu. So very simple. The very first option will be the one that I'm looking for, how to install the Linux dynamic update client. So go ahead, click that. I see where I am, I know where I am. So now we can get started. Now with Ubuntu, we do have to use terminal on occasion. Terminal is a very scary black box that just has the PC, the user, and a blinky light. That blinky light, we have to be typing in commands. So what NoIP does is it has all the commands ready for us. So all we have to do is copy and paste. Now, oddly enough, the first command isn't part of this list. It's right here. So please make sure that we start with this or else none of the other commands are going to work. So I've just highlighted it. I'm going to go ahead, copy, go back to terminal and paste. It's going to ask for my password. And what it'll do is it'll switch my user to the root user. We can see that. And that is like giving yourself administrative rights. So we have that all set up. So the next things we have to do is literally just go ahead and copy all these different bullet points. So copy, go back and paste, enter, and go to the next one. Copy, paste, enter. So we're going to see a lot of text happening. It's completely fine. Go to the next one, copy, paste. So we don't even need to write any of these. That's how simple this is. Copy, paste, copy, and paste. Once again, it's going to be doing a lot of things. It looks like here, please enter the login email string for no IP. So now it's going to ask for us to put in our username and password. So putting in username, please enter the password. Password gets put in. Only one host is registered. This one will be used. Update interval, 30 is how many minutes? 30 minutes is pretty good. So we'll just hit enter, that's the default. Do we want to run something additional? No, no, we just leave all the defaults, just hit enter. And then that's good to go. So if we scroll down, we look at the information. All it says is once we put in the username and password, we're good to go. There's nothing else we need to do. Now it does give some additional information that if we did need to configure the file so that we do add additional hosts or we change the host, then we would have to copy and paste in this command and then be able to make any additional changes. So we've already signed up for a no IP client account. We have installed the client. Very last thing we need to deal with is port forwarding. So port forwarding is telling our router that we want anything that's coming outwards from our network to go to a particular computer. So similarly with the internet IP address, your router will normally give a computer a dynamic IP address internally so that when that computer turns off and turns on, it will be given a new IP address. Now we're not gonna to go too much in depth with the different steps for creating a static IP address for your computer at home. But I just want to note that it does exist as well as the 
information I'm going to show about port forwarding is going to be different per router. So if you have a D-Link router or if you have a Linksys router, it's all going to look slightly different, but the main concepts are the same. So the idea is to find where we look for something called port forwarding and we add our computer to be able to be port forward. So first, before we get started, I do want to go to terminal one last time. There's one additional command I want to give before I start worrying about port forward. And that is if config. If config will give me the network information about the computer, which I will need for the port forwarding. So I go ahead, hit enter, and it's going to give me what my internet address is. So right here, I see this 10.0.1.12. This is the address internally for this particular computer. So I want to remember that when I go to my router. I access my router once again through internet browser, just going to open another tab. You do want to check your router. It will have the series of numbers you need to type in on the sticker. I already know it, so I'm just going to go ahead and type it. And oftentimes it will ask for a password, so I'm going to pause it so I can do this and then get right back in. So now that we're in, you see that I'm currently using a Netgear router. So it depends on what brand, it will all look slightly different. If you are using a Netgear router, then you can follow along with these instructions, but if not, go to your router's web page and there will most likely be some instructions there or you can Google it to find it yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the advanced tab. Usually port forwarding will be an advanced function. And then I will go to advanced setup. Under advanced setup, here we do have port forwarding. So that's what the feature we're looking for. So now that I'm on this port forward page, I am looking for port forwarding. Port triggering is something completely different. We don't need to worry about it. You will see a list of other different forwards. This is currently blurred out, which is fine, but you would be able to then make changes to it as necessary. We are looking under service name for HTTP, and then it will ask for what server IP address to use. Then we go ahead and choose the server address that we found in if config. So if config, we found that the address was 10.0.1.12. So that's the one that I want in here. Once I'm done that, I go ahead and click add and then it will forward any incoming requests over a web browser to that computer. And then anything from that computer can come out. Now this works just fine in the Edmonton area if you are part of the Shaw internet service. If you are part of TELUS, they do uh, block port 80 for home networking. So what you'd end up having to do is you'd have to go into the custom or advanced settings of port forwarding and change the default port. So for each TTP or a web browser, the default port is 80. All you'd have to do in the custom area is change it so that the incoming port is something like 81, and then the internal port is still 80. So there is the external port and the internal port. So you just change the external one to something other than 80, and then make the internal port 80, and then it'll work just fine. This is only for TELUS, and it's just so that they can separate more of their business plans and their home plans. So once that's done, then I will be able to access this particular computer from any internet location on the planet. So with that, that's everything for this particular tutorial. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And leave a comment below if uh, there's something that you'd like more information about. And finally, uh, the Twitter and Facebook is down there. And there'll be a link to a companion uh, blog post with the step-by-step -step instructions if you uh, like to see it step-by-step -step instead of in a video. Till next time, see you then.